today we are starting the topic of probability uh, after this one more lecture will be there on probability so probability and arrangements that means probability permutation combination this is an important topic in almost all the competitive exam this comes so i will try to elaborate as much as possible so we will start with the basic theory so this flashcard summarize almost all the theory you need to, uh, to know for probability chapter and permutation combination chapter permutation combination chapter i will discuss as a separate unit itself so anyway that related theory also is discussed here again this is a not nothing new these all are things we are uh, already learned in school days just to remind you these uh, definitions are given here or these properties are given here so one by one i will just explain what uh, these are probability of an event is number of successful outcome divided by number of possible outcome so that is what you have learned basic definition of probability na probability is equal to a by b where a is successful outcome b is total outcome for example when you are tossing a coin head and tail are the two possibility what is the probability of getting a head head is only one time so one out of total two things are there in the sample space so 1 by 2 that is a by b definition is that but when there is two uh, coins tossed at the same time there are four possibility head and head can comes head first tail next tail first head next tail and tail can go also come these are the four possibilities and the question is asking what is the probability of both the coins are uh, showing you tail so definitely that will be one possibility successful outcome is one out of total possible outcome is four because there are four things in the sample space this is called sample space but the problem with this approach is all the question you cannot directly do with this approach you may need a combination of something more especially combination of and and or is needed in some questions at least combination of and and or i will explain for example if there are four coins tossed at the same time listing out the sample space there will be 16 things in the sample space that will be very challenging when four coins are tossed at the same time because head 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 tail head head tail head head tail head head tail head 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 likewise 16 possibilities are there so in that kind of a question in that kind of a event it will be difficult to analyze for example if it is what is the probability of getting a getting all the four heads all the four heads means listing out all the 16 and taking out what you need that is one possibility but the easy way is all the four head means head 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 should occur separately think about their probability that means first time head occurring what is the chance one by two chance because head is one out of two things second time head occurring also 1 by 2 chance third time head also 1 by 2 fourth time head also 1 by 2 we need all the four compulsorily head na that means we need head and head and head and head and whenever you have and in the definition you should understand you can use multiplication that is told by this basic fact fundamental principle of counting if one thing can be done in m ways another thing in n ways both the things together can be done in m into n ways so here there are four things so all the four things together can be done in 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 1 by 16 ways so 1 by 16 will be the answer if four coins are tossed and all the four time the probability of getting head will be 1 by 6 some questions you have to use a combination of this and and or for example four times uh, tossing head sorry four times tossing coin so what is the probability of getting at least three tails at least three tails means there you have to use the combination at least three tail means three tail is okay four tail is also okay that means three tail probability you have to find four tail probability you have to find three tail or four tail means finding this probability finding this probability you have to add it up yeah how to find it faster and which all questions comes that we will discuss in detail anyway at least three tail means in four tossing at least three means three or more than three more than three means maximum four only is possible so there you have to add up 
if it is at least one tail occurring probability when you are tossing four coins coin 1 coin 2 coin 3 coin 4 all uh, at least one tail means what at least one tail means one tail is okay two tail is okay three tail is okay four tail is okay there one tail probability or two tail probability or three tail probability or four tail probability these four are okay that means finding this probability plus this probability plus this probability plus these four things adding up you will get the total probability but the problem is that is time consuming because this is four different things analyzing it will be time consuming that is where the complement concept will help you out probability of a complement is equal to 1 minus probability of a that means probability of an event not happening will be 1 minus probability of an event happening So, probability of A complement what it is I will explain now, probability of A complement will be for example, uh, if it is uh, all the 4 coins tossed, what is the probability of uh, getting at least one head, at least one head or at least one tail, at least one head means one head is okay, two head is okay, three head is okay, four head is also okay. The only thing that is not okay is zero head. At least one head means all these four are okay. Greater than or equal to one head. So, zero head probability if you can find and subtract it from total probability one, that is the faster way of doing it. Zero head probability means all the four should be tail. All the four tail means I told you one by two into one by two into one by two into one by two you can do. One by two, one by two, one by two, one by two is one by sixteen. So, at least one head you, you can easily say it is 1 minus 1 by 16 using the complementary probability approach. Probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus probability of A. So, that is how uh, complement will help you out. Again, I am just giving you an idea first, then with the questions I will give you more idea. So, this um, probability of A complement, the basic reason why that is working is sum of probabilities of all the events is 1. For example, when you throw a dice, you know dice I guess, the possibilities for a dice is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, these are the five, 6 different sides. When you throw a dice, what is the probability of getting a number 1 or getting a number 3? Getting a number 3 probability is 1 by 6 because 3 is just 1 out of 6 sides. Getting a number 6 is 1 by 6 means not getting a number 6 will be 1 minus 1 by 6 because not getting means 1 is okay, 2 is okay, 4 is okay, 5 is okay, 6 is okay. So, not getting 3 means 1 minus 1 by 6. Again, that is nothing but complement of a complement of getting uh, 3 will be probability of not getting 3. Na? So, that is a uh, otherwise we can say probability of getting 1, 1 by 6, probability of getting 2, 1 by 6, probability of getting 3, 1 by 6, probability of getting 4, 1 by 6, probability of getting 5, 1 by 6, probability of getting 6 is 1 by 6. If you add all these th 6 things, you will get exactly 1. That is what this property is saying. Probability of all the events added will be 1. And another property you should understand is probability cannot go above 1 or cannot go below 0. That means maximum possibility is getting 1 probability, minimum possibility is getting 0 possibility. 1 means 100 percentage probability, 0 means 0 percentage probability if you convert it into percentage. 0, 100 percentage probability or 1 probability will happen when the event is a sure event. Event is a sure event means for example, when you throw a dice, what is the probability of getting a number less than 7? number less than 7 number less than 7 probability will be 1 for sure because all the numbers on the dice is less than 7 so definitely probability of getting a number less than 7 will be 1 so that is called sure event 100 percent sure event so probability 1 is called 100 percent sure event Probability 0, for example, what is the probability of getting a number more than 6 when you throw 
a single dice. Probability of a number more than 6 when you throw a dice. Okay, so probability of getting a number more than 6 uh, when you throw a dice will be 0. Why? Because all the numbers are uh, less than 6. So, more than 6 it will be impossible event. So, if the probability of an event is 0, that is called impossible event. So, all the probability will lie between 0 and 1. I hope all of you understood that also. So, this much basic information from this, we can uh, do more questions and understand more theory. Yeah, when you throw a dice, uh, when you throw two dice, this is a sample space. When question comes, I will explain about that also. First, try this question, a very simple question which came in June 2017. Okay, so these two questions, uh, you have to read the question properly. It is an unbiased die. Unbiased means fair, unbiased coin. That means fair coin. That means normal coin. Normal coin means a coin which have two sides and both the sides have equal chance of occurring. That is called unbiased, not biased towards any side. Head chance is 50 percentage or half. Tail also half. That is a simple meaning unbiased. For example, if you want to know then what is a biased coin? A coin which is biased towards one side or one side have a higher chance than the other side. A typical example I will give you for a, a simple example for a biased die. If you have seen the movie Sholay, the Hindi movie Sholay if you have seen, there is a coin that is used in that, uh, used by the Amitabh Bachchan character there, which have two sides but both the sides are head. That is a biased coin because by definition, coin have two sides head and tail. But this how both the sides head means the probability of getting a head is 1 there or 100 percentage is the probability. So, that is a biased coin biased towards the side head. So, again but here in this question it is a normal unbiased coin. Independently it also means one result will not depend on the other. So, if that is the case, so 5 are already independently tossed. 5 are independently tossed means um, 5 times you are getting head, 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 head. So, all the 5 times head is occurring, what is the probability of getting 6th time head? That is the question. So, this, these 5 times head occurred that we cannot change at all, that already happened. So, what is the probability of getting head on the 6th time means that will be just 1 by 2. So, now why the first sentence? is there then in this question that is just to confuse you. 5 are independently tossed and they all result in head means that probability is not going to affect the next time. That means 6th coin is now independently tossed means that is like a fresh coin being tossed. A fresh coin being tossed the probability of getting head will be 1 by 2. So, the answer is 1 by 2 option C. So, very simple question December 2018 this came. Same question. Uh, the question, this question, June 2017 question, there it was, die, dice or die asked. So, it is thrown three times, all the three times the uh, result was 6. All the three times 6 happened means that you cannot change at all. That already happened. What is the probability of getting a 6 on the fourth time? So, these three times what happened that does not matter at all. Fourth time, the probability of getting a 6 will be just 1 out of 6 because there are 6 sides. 6 is just 1 out of 6 sides. So, probability of getting 6 will be 1 by 6 itself. So, option A is the correct answer. Again, this is also an unbiased fair die. Fair and unbiased are same. That means, 6 have no special uh, what we can say extra chance or anything. Then why 3 times 6 happen? That is just a coincidence. 3 times 6 occurring does not guarantee next time 6 occurring or does not add even a point 1 probability extra to the natural probability. So, 1 by 6 only is the answer. 1 by 1, 2, 9, 6 would have been the answer if the question was, if the question was you are throwing 4 dice, what is the probability of getting 6 in all the 4 dice? Then that will be 1 by 6 into 1 by 6 into 1 by 6 into 1 by 6. That is 1 by 6 raised to 4. But here already 3 times 6 occurred. So, that 
does not matter at all. So, the answer is option A 1 by 6 only. If that is clear, let us go to the next question. Try this question June 2018 CSAR net problem. All of you try it. Previous two questions are easy question, but this question you have to think a little bit more. If you have not seen these kinds of questions much, it may be a little tricky. Once you understand the theory, this is very simple also. Here the concept of complementary probability will help you a lot. Two students are solving the same problem independently. That means one person's probability is not going to affect the other person's chance at all. If the probability that the first one solves the problem is 3 by 5. So, let A be the first person or first student. Probability of A solving is 3 by 5. So, what will be probability of A not solving? 1 minus 3 by 5. Na? Using the complementary probability approach we discussed. 3 by 5 is the chance for A solving. So, A not solving chance will be 2 by 5. The pizza example will help you in this question also. Think that a pizza is cut into 5 parts. If you are taking 3 parts already, how many parts will be remaining on the box? In the box, 2 out of 5 parts. When 3 out of 5 is taken from 5 parts, 2 out of 5 parts will be remaining. So, logically you can say 3 by 5 chance for A to solve it, 2 by 5 chance for A not to solve it. Because 1 minus 3 by 5 will be probability of A not solving it. Same way probability of B solving is given as 4 by 5. Probability of B not solving will be how much? 1 minus 4 by 5 that is 1 by 5. So, this much we know already. Now, the question is asking what is the probability that at least one of them solves the problem? At least one of them means one of them solving the problem is okay both of them solving the problem is also okay what is not okay none of them solving is not okay none of them solving is not okay here finding one of them solving probability fi finding both of them solving probability and adding that is one way of doing it because one of them solving or both of them solving that is the meaning of at least one of them solving but that is time consuming that is why we are not doing that instead of that we are saying that 1 minus none of them solving will be at least one of them solving because we know that there are only three possibilities that can happen what are the three possibility either none will solve no one will solve or exactly one of them will solve one of them will solve or both of them will solve these are the three possibility we want one of them and both of them solving probability added. That is the meaning of at least one of them. Instead of adding them, we are doing 1 minus none of them solving probability because total probability is 1. This plus this plus this is 1. So, 1 minus none will give you 1 plus both probability already. That means no one solving probability you have to find it first. No one solving means A not solving, B not solving at the same time. That means A and B not solving at the same time means 2 by 5 into 1 by 5 because no A not solving and B not solving. So, 2 by 5 into 1 by 5. That will be probability of A and B both not solving, none of them solving. 1 minus that will be our required answer. 1 minus 2 by 5 into 1 by 5 will be our required answer. So, 1 minus 2 by 5 into 1 by 5 means 1 minus 2 by 25. 1 minus 2 by 25 means 23 by 25. Answer is option D, 23 by 25. So, that is the shortcut method of doing this question. 1 minus none solving. 1 minus none solving means 1 minus A not solving and B not solving. That is probability of A not solving and B not solving means you have to multiply those probability. A not solving probability is 2 by 5. B not solving probability is 4 by 5. 1 minus, sorry, 4 by 1 minus 4 by 5, 1 by 5. So, 1 minus 2 by 5 into 1 by 5 is the final answer. That means that is 1 minus 2 by 20, 25. 2 by 25 subtracted from 1 means 23 by 25. Option D is the answer. So, at least one of them solving this is how to do. So, this question how many other variety is possible? If the question is asking none of them solving, none of them solving, 
then what we done 1 minus none of them solving is what we found 23 by 25. So, none of them solving will be nothing but 2 by 25 because we just found it now. 2 by 5 into 1 by 5, 2 by 5 into 1 by 5 is uh, 2 by 25 or the question also can ask exactly one of them solving, exactly one of them solving, exactly one of them solving may take some time because A solving and B not solving, B solving and A not solving, these two probabilities you have to add up that will give you the final answer. So, that are the different possibilities for these kinds of question. So, I will show you one more example which came in previous net exam of this type of problem. Look at this question, June 2019 this question came, all of you try it please. Okay, so I will start explaining, a canal system is shown in the figure, this is the system, uh, water flows from A to B through channels, through two channels, A to B through two channels. Gate G1 and G2 are the two channels, G1 and G2 are operated independently to regulate the flow. That means, G1 opening does not guarantee that G2 will open, that is the meaning of independently operate. Probability of G1 to be open is 10 percentage, 10 percentage means 10 by 100 that means 1 by 10 or 0 0.1 is the probability or 10 percentage itself if you write also it is ok, 10 percentage. And probability of G2 open is 20 percentage, 20 percentage is the probability for G2 to be open. What is the probability that water will flow from A to B? Water flowing from A to B means you should understand there are three ways the water can flow from A to B. One way is flowing only through G1, G2 closed and G1 open, G1 open and G2 closed, closed I am denoting by C or complement of G1, G2 open. G1 open, open I am denoting by O. Another possibility is G1 closed, for example, G1, G2 open and G1 closed, G1 closed and G2 open, that is another possibility. The third possibility is both of them being open, that is also possible, both gates can be also open. Na? Both gates can be open means G1 open and G2 open. So, these are the three ways in which water can flow from A to B. So, finding this probability, finding this probability, finding this probability and adding up is one possibility, but that is time consuming. As that is time consuming, the easy way of doing it, just like the previous question, here you can do, the only possibility remaining is G1 closed and G2 closed. That is the probability we do not want, we do not want means that is the only possibility by which the water will not flow from A to B. So, G1 closed and G2 closed are the only possibility we do not want. That is a possibility we do not want, but 1 minus what we do not want will be what we want. Na? That means, 1 minus probability of G1 closed and and means multiplication, probability of G2 closed. If you find this, you can find the answer in one step because this is the only probability we do not want. From the total, if you remove that, you will get the answer. So, G1 closed probability is how much? G1 open probability is 10 percentage means G1 closed probability will be 90 percentage. Chances for G1 to be open is 10 percentage. So, 100 minus 10, 90 percentage will be G1 closed. 90 percentage means in probability we will say 90 by 100 that is 9 by 10 for simplification purpose that is all. So, G2 open is 20 percentage, G2 closed will be 100 minus 20 percentage, 80 percentage, 80 percentage is 80 by 100 that is 8 by 10, 8 by 10 and this will be our final answer. This simplified what you will get? 1 minus 72 by 100, 1 minus 72 by 100 means 72 by 100 is exactly 72 percentage, 1 is nothing but 100 percentage, 100 percentage minus 72 percentage, 28 percentage or if you are not ok with the logical approach do mathematically simplify this, you will get 28 by 100, 28 by 100 but the question is asking in percentage, 28 
28 by 100 is same as 28 percentage. So, option C is the answer. Again, just like previous question, what we need is what not what we are finding, what we not need we are finding and fi subtracting from it from the total probability that is the easiest approach of doing these kinds of questions. 100 percentage minus A and B not, uh, sorry G1 and G2 not open probability we are finding. Again, this question also can be asked in different ways. What is the probability that both G1 and G2 is open? Then you only have to find 10 percentage that is 10 by 100 into 20 percentage that is 20 by 100. 10 by 100 into 20 by 100 is uh, 10 by 100 into 20 by 100 that is 2 percentage we will get. 10 percentage of 20 percentage that is 2 percentage. So, otherwise exactly one gate open then you have to find G1 open and G2 closed, G2 open and G1 closed. So, that is why the final answer is option C in this question 28 percentage. If that is clear, uh, yeah, the detailed steps are written here. If you want, you can read through it. Total probability minus both gates closed probability. That means both gates closed means this is a probability. Subtracting, you will get 28 percentage. We will discuss another question which came in December 2015 CSAR net exam. Okay, so in this question, probability that a ticketless traveler is caught during a trip is 0.1. That means, for not traveling with a ticket, sorry, for uh, traveling without a ticket, a person is caught. The chances for that happening is 10 percentage. Because if you uh, think about the real life situation also in train ticket and all, TTR may not come all the time. So, the chances of a ticketless traveler to be caught is less that is what the question also saying that is only 0 0.1 0 0.1 means 0 0.1 is nothing but 1 by 10 1 by 10 means 10 by 100 that is 10 percentage so 10 percent chances there for the tickler traveler to be caught to be caught chance is 10 percentage so this traveler is making four different trips i will call that trips a b c d four trips a trip b trip c trip d trip four trips are there the probability that he or she will be caught during at least one trip like previous question here also you have to be logical at least one trip means at least one trip have four possibility it can be exactly one trip or exactly one trip he can be caught that means a trip or b trip or c trip or d trip exactly one trip second possibility is both two trips he can be caught a b a c a d b c b d a, a c a d many possibilities like that. So, two trips he can be caught. Third possibility is three, three trips he can be caught A, B, C, A, B, D, B, C, D, A, C, D. So, like that three trips also he can be caught or all the four trips also he can be caught. All the four trips also he can be caught. That means the total probability as the question is asking at least at, uh, at least one trip means all these four probabilities should be added. But that is a very time consuming job. You cannot do that in less than 2 minutes. That is why again the complement probability will help you in this question also. The only thing remaining is zero trip he is being caught. Zero trip he is being caught means he is not caught in any of the trip. That is the meaning of zero trip he is getting caught. Find the probability of zero trip he is getting caught. 1 minus that if you do 1 minus 0 trip getting caught will be what we want will be these four probabilities added. So, 0 trip getting caught probability you have to first find 0 trip getting caught means a trip also he is not getting caught a trip he is getting caught as 0.1 probability. So, he is not getting caught in a trip will be 0.9 1 minus 0.1. 0.9. B trip also he should not be getting caught because zero trip he is getting caught means B trip also not getting caught. Not getting caught probability is 1 minus 0 0.1, 0 0.9. C trip also not getting caught, D trip also not getting caught. All the four trips getting not getting caught at the same time means you have to multiply them because A trip also not getting caught and and means multiplication or means addition in probability. So, 0.9 into 0.9 into 0.9 into 0.9 will be not getting caught in all the four trips. 
ിംഗ് at least one trip he is getting caught na that is why option a point 1 minus point 9 raised to 4 is the answer this question also they can ask in different ways what is the probability that he is getting caught in all the four trips that will be even easy you have to do point 1 into point 1 into point 1 into point 1 that will be the answer if the question is asking he is not he is getting caught in all the four trips that is point 1 raised to 4 will be the answer if that is the question another way the question can be asked is what is the probability that he is not getting caught in any of the four trips that we already discussed now 0.9 raised to 4 will be the answer but for this question 1 minus 0.9 raised to 4 is the answer because we want at least one trip he is getting caught that is why option a is the answer